There was a time when a 10 lakh rupee Maruti Suzuki product was unthinkable of. Of course, there was the original Baleno which went very close to that figure, but we all know what happened with that product. People were just not ready to absorb a Maruti Suzuki sedan at that price point. There was always the Honda City for that. But Maruti Suzuki tried a few more times. The Kazashi was there, the Grand Vitara happened. But again, these were not at price brackets that people thought of a Maruti Suzuki product to be priced at. But now, time has changed and inflation has really resulted in a completely different market dynamic. There are cars which go from 15 lakh rupees all the way to 35 lakh rupees and this bracket is considered to be very normal. And that is what Maruti Suzuki is trying to capitalize on by launching the car that you see behind me, which is the Invicto. Of course, it is the cousin or it is based on the same product as the Toyota Innova Hi-Cross. But there are some subtle changes which make it very uniquely Maruti. And that's exactly what we are going to be talking about today. When it comes to the design or the way the Invicto looks, it's almost similar to the Innova Hi-Cross. Of course, there are some subtle changes here and there. But largely, the silhouette, the design, everything remains exactly the same. At the front, the big change is of course in the grille section. There is a little bit of a chrome strip that runs a little offset of the center. And the LED signature, that's also very uniquely Marathi. But other than that, there is literally no change. As you move to the back, the only change again remains a little bit of a splash of chrome and the different light signature in the tail lamp cluster. This is the classic case of basic badge engineering. And uh, it of course exists with the High Rider and the Grand Vitara as well. But in this one, the Invicto, there is hardly anything to choose from when it comes to how the things are laid out on the inside. In terms of the design execution, you have essentially the same bits. So the dashboard layout is pretty much the same. It's a bit more uh, monochrome in here because of the all black treatment. But overall, from the design execution point of view, it's exactly the same. Even the way the screen hangs off <laughs> is the same. And it's also the same system. The real estate management is exactly the same as well. I would have imagined that uh, Marty would do the graphics at least slightly differently, but that is also just taken as is from the Innova high cross and uh, you get your regular readouts and of course the graphic as well that shows you what exactly is happening with the drivetrain whether it's the motor or the batteries giving you the juice or it's just the engine or both of them driving the wheels all sorts of things even the way the center console is laid out is exactly the same with the same buttons and also the usb ports that you have down here one is type a one is type c so there is really no change over here Things are somewhat similar in the middle as well. Of course, you do not get the brilliant seats, which also have the Ottoman function. These are very regular, very basic captain seats, but they're comfortable enough. I think the fabric or the material, the upholstery material, that's a little bit different between the two cars. And this one feels a little bit uh, not as plush, but uh, overall, I think the seat construction is exactly the same. And the comfort levels are also pretty decent. As with the high cross, the third row of seats in the Invicto are also very usable. There is ample amount of space because this car is really big on space. You have enough flexibility around and uh, yeah, just the sheer space management is absolutely brilliant. So the benefit of that space is felt the maximum in the last row of seats and fitting two people, two tallish people, one behind the other from the second or the third row is not going to be a problem at all. And two fairly big persons seated next to each other should also not be such a big bother. With the Invicto, the cabin experience is not as opulent as in the high cross and you do not get certain things like for example the contrasting uh, treatment on the door cards. You have leather, brown leather in the high cross and you get an all black treatment over here of course. In terms of the comparison with the high cross, it does fall short a little bit. But then again, it's also slightly cheaper than the high cross. The high cross, of course, you know, you have the whole suite of ADAS features. Uh, that's one of the biggest talking points. You do not get that in the Invicto. And the wheel sizes are also different. Uh, the high cross rides on 18 inch wheels. This one is on 17 inches. Of course, we know that 17 inches would uh, afford you slightly better ride quality, but uh, just that the margins are so negligible that you just overlook it. 
Maruti has also taken a very wise decision of offering the Invicto with only the hybrid drivetrain and that basically is to do with the price justification. You already have a fairly expensive platform and uh, if you do not have the more flexible drivetrain, then justifying the price tag is going to be a little bit more difficult. But because there is this novelty attached to this car because of this being a hybrid, the price tag kind of starts to make a lot of sense. But that's a debate that is going to take you down a rabbit hole and we can just keep discussing the pros and the cons of it. The fact of the matter is, Maruti has taken this decision. It has decided to omit the ADAS features. It has decided to make this car ride on 17-inch wheels and a few other bits are missing compared to the High Cross, which is okay because it really genuinely carries everything that you ordinarily will need from a car of this size and this sort. On features, it really gets everything. Uh, you, of course, have all the connectivity options, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that regular stuff is there. And uh, you really don't feel like you're shortchanged on anything. So in terms of the way this car has been packaged and turned out is uh, in keeping with what the market wants. To drive, it's pretty much the same as the Hycross, unsurprisingly, of course. Uh, I did think that the 17-inch wheels are going to make a fair amount of difference, but they really do not. The way this thing holds the road surface is pretty decent. Uh, the grip levels are pretty okay, but the highlight is, as with the high cross again, the ride quality. I think this thing really absorbs everything that the road will have to throw at you, and uh, it's not really going to go into a complaint mode at all. Yes, of course, you're going to feel a little bit of a jolt in the cabin, But this unibody construction really has done a lot of good for both Toyota and now of course Marty Suzuki as well because the game from the body on ladder Innova has moved so far ahead in terms of platform engineering that uh, if you now sit into the body on ladder Innova, you're going to feel a little bit disappointed. Of course, it's no doubt still a very, very decent car and it uh, is almost indestructible. But the sophistication of engineering is really evident in the way this thing has turned out. So the unibody construction or the monocoque platform, that has really upped the ante in a big way. While the Invicto is pretty comfortable for a big family, that is, you can either seat seven people in it or eight people, depending on what configuration you go for, you either have two captain seats in the middle or there's a bench. I personally feel that a bench is always better because it affords you more flexibility in the cabin, but well, there are people who, of course, go for the captain seats because they think that it's a big throne that they're sitting on almost. It is not an enthusiast car by any measure, and that's again the same case with the High Cross as well. But it drives fairly confidently. Even on the steering, the feedback, uh, the response, the response from the brakes, everything feels very nicely judged, and uh, it is not going to disappoint you even if you're. Uh, behind the wheel. So what really has Maruti Suzuki done with the Invicto is expanded the segment a little bit, of course. Uh, there is the Innova High Cross a little higher up this one, but it also offers you a little bit more in terms of the opulence, in terms of brand equity, all that stuff. Also features, undoubtedly. But in terms of what this thing is as a vehicle on product attributes, this thing is completely the same as the Innova High Cross. The ride quality is absolutely phenomenal. The quality on the inside, fairly decent. Everything feels very well put together. Of course, there is a little bit of a compromise on things that I've not liked about the High Cross as well. For example, the roof felt material, not really the best out there. And the general sense of color that you have, it's not as rich as the Innova High Cross. It's just a big black or a grey experience that you get inside the cabin. But that's not all too bad. I think it looks pretty decent and it's fairly well turned out. The seats, absolutely brilliant again. A little bit lesser on upholstery quality perhaps, but uh, not something that is going to break the deal for you. They do not offer you the Ottoman seats, of course. That would have been absolutely fantastic. But if you go back and see our review of the High Cross versus, of course, the Scorpio N, I have said that the usability of the Ottomans is somewhat restricted if you do not push the front seats all the way forward. So 
it's very good to have but you really can use it only in a specific way so the fact that maruti has done away with the ottoman uh, feature is not something that is going to bother me a lot but it's a good to have item for sure on features again it's very neck and neck between the two cars and the features that you do not get in the invicto are going to basically give you bragging rights with the high cross that's about it overall as a product as something that is going to be good for a big family the invicto works